All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 4 minus 625 is equal to 0. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite x to the power of 4 as x squared to the power of 2. And then we write 625 as 25 squared. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x squared and b is 25. So I have x squared plus 25 times x squared minus 25 is equal to 0. So now this is actually going to give me two equations. I have x squared plus 25 is equal to 0 and I have x squared minus 25 is equal to zero. So let's first start by solving x squared minus 25 equals zero. So to solve this, I'm going to add 25 on both sides. So now I have x squared is equal to 25. And now to solve this, I simply have to take the square root on both sides. So I have the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of 25. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 25 is positive or negative 5. Now, for x squared plus 25 is equal to 0, to solve this, I'm going to subtract 25 on both sides. These two cancel out. So now I have x squared is equal to negative 25. And now, like we did for this equation, I'm going to take the square root on both sides. The square root of x squared is x. And the square root of negative 25, well, I can rewrite this as the square root of 25 times the square root of negative 1. So as we all know, the square root of 25 is positive and negative 5. And the square root of negative 1, if you guys don't know what that is, the square root of negative 1, this is equal to the, variable, to the imaginary number i. So now I have x is equal to positive negative 5i. So my four solutions are positive 5, negative 5, positive 5i, and negative 5i. Alright, so in this problem, I have m to the power of 9 plus m to the power of 6 is equal to 36. So I'm going to first rewrite m to the power of 9 as m to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And then we write m to the power of 6 as m to the power of 3 to the power of 2. And this is equal to 36. Now I'm going to let m to the power of 3 equal to the variable t. So now I have t to the power of 3 plus t squared is equal to 36. Now, if I subtract 36 on both sides, oops, sorry, these two cancel out, and now I have t to the power of 3 plus t squared minus 36 is equal to 0. So now to solve this, I'm just going to start, I actually need to find one value of t to find the rest. So to do that, I'm just going to start plugging in values. So if I plugged in 0 here, that would just be negative 36. If I plugged in 1, that wouldn't work. 2, that would be 2 to the power of 3, which is 8, plus 2 squared, which is 4, minus 36, which would not work. 3, that would be 27 plus 9 minus 36, which would work, because 27 plus 9 is 36, so I have 36 minus 36 is 0, which is right. So t equals 3, that's our... That's the value, that's one value of t. So now that we have that value, we can find the rest of the values. So what I'm going to do is, from here, I'm going to rewrite this as t to the power of 3 minus 3t squared plus 4t squared 
minus 36 is equal to 0. And now, if I factor out t squared from t to the power of 3 minus 3t squared, I get t squared times t minus 3 plus, now I have 4, times t squared minus 9. Now, this is the same thing as t squared times t minus 3 plus 4 times t plus 3 times t minus 3 is equal to 0. Now, if I factor out t minus 3, I get t minus 3 times t squared plus 4t plus 12 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have t minus 3 is equal to 0, meaning t is 3, and t squared plus 4t plus 12 is equal to 0. And this is actually going to be result in no solutions. So t equals 3 is my only value. And remember how we set m to the power of 3 equal t. So if m to the power of 3 is equal to 3, this means that m is equal to the cube root of 3. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 2 over 3 is equal to 16. So I obviously want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, I'm going to rewrite this, or sorry, I'm actually going to take the power of 3 over 2 on both sides. And the reason I did this was because if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n, right? And we want to find a value that when multiplied by 2 over 3 is equal to 1, because we obviously just want to find the value of x, and x is the same thing as x to the power of 1. So we want to make this 2 over 3 into a 1, and to do that, we need to multiply it with another number to make it 1. So that's why I multiplied it with 3 over 2, because if you multiply 2 over 3, 3 over 2, these two are reciprocals, so they make 1. So now, because if I have something in the form a to the power of n to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n times n, x to the power of 2 over 3 to the power of 3 over 2, that's x to the power of 2 over 3 times 3 over 2, which is simply 1, and this is equal to 16 to the power of 3 over 2. So I have x equals 16 to the power of 3 over 2, and we actually have to simplify this a little bit. So 16 to the power of 3 over 2, well, 16 is the same thing as 4 squared. So now I have 4 squared to the power of 3 over 2. And remember, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, that's equal to a to the power of n times n. So this is equal to 4 to the power of 2 times 3 over 2. Now these twos can simply cancel out. So now I have x is equal to 4 to the power of 3. Now 4, that's the same thing as 2 squared. So now I have x is equal to 2 squared to the power of 3. 2 to the power of 3, or sorry, 2 times 3 is 6. So I have x is equal to 2 to the power of 6. And this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3 squared, right? 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so now I have 8 squared, which is equal to 64. So x is equal to 64, and that is my answer.